The framework team just dropped a few major updates at the spring event, and honestly, all of them are pretty killer, but one of them in particular gives you just one more reason to spend less time inside of Figma and more time directly in Framer. That is a complete overhaul of how vectors work. And honestly, they did a pretty damn good job. Hey, I'm Matt Jumper, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know about vectors inside of Framer. I'll show you how to import your own icons that you design in Illustrator or Figma or other software, inserting icons from their kind of pre-existing libraries, designing icons from scratch, creating vector sets and variables, and also designing your own animations, all of this right in Framer. So let's dive in. Okay, so we have our landing page here and you can see that we're missing all of the icons. So let's get started by using some of Framer's um, integrations to existing libraries and insert them directly into the canvas here. So I'm gonna start with this features um, drop down here. I have a placeholder for the icon um, or a frame to, to house it actually. So I can go to the insert menu and actually go to icons and I can browse all these collections. I'm gonna use material. I like it because of the hard edges that it has. So I can click and drag this in here and I'm gonna quickly resize it to 16 by 16 and center it. And you'll see on the right here, we actually have a full icon library to browse here visually, which is huge. Previously with the um, pre-made like library integrations with Phosphor, Material, et cetera, you only had a dropdown or a search string, which visually you could not figure out what icon it was until you searched it or like went on the web. So this is definitely a much better browsing experience and searching as well. I can look for um, Chevron and select this. And there is no up and down only left and right. So I can just go to transform here, rotate it and do 90 degrees. And I'm going to remove this uh, background here. So when I click on this icon, you'll see that I actually get a fill prop as well. So I can click on this and set it to a style that I have, customize that. And I can actually just move this down a bit, um, say just two pixels and center it with that, that text there. Because I'm inside of a frame here, I can do that. Um, the prop here, actually the starting color should be 64% here and then we'll match the hover state. So that was an easy way just to get an icon in there. Uh, the big update there is really just the fact that it's uh, um, you can visually browse it. With Phosphor icons and maybe some other sets as well, um, if I choose an icon here, you'll see that we actually get a couple more props that Material didn't have. So we have Width and Alpha, and you can actually make these in your own vector sets as well. So Width is the, the Stroke Width. So the Stroke Width, I can increase it and decrease it, and you'll see it actually updates inside of here as well, which is nice. Um, and then the Alpha is actually the fill inside of it. So it's a nice touch from Phosphor, um, again, that you can make yourself. But the other things to note with Phosphor icons is that there's a plugin as well. And if I were to insert that same icon from the plugin, I actually get the vector itself. And you'll see that I actually have all the vector controls here. So I can click on this and I can totally tweak it as I please. Um, you can also just click and resize it um, and not have the constraints of it being in the box, kind of like this icon has here. Um, so it's a good thing to note, um, both have the pros and cons, but it's good to have that option. Um, so I can click and copy this icon here and just go into this button, go into that icon frame here and just paste it in. And it's simple enough just to click on this and let's type an arrow. We can look at all the arrows here. Arrow right is perfect. I'm going to remove this transform here. And we can make this the primary color. We'll go to 16. We'll center it. And just like that, we have a consistent icon. I'm gonna take this a step further and just do a quick animation, not on the icon itself, but just moving the icon. So I'm duplicating this here, I hit Command D, and I'm just gonna shift nudge this over to the left. And this icon container is overflow hidden. So it's uh, cropping that off on the left there. And on the hover state, I'm just gonna nudge that back to the right. And now when I preview this, we have a nice just opacity hover on this arrow here. And then on the button, we have it sliding over. So just good, simple, consistent icons here. Now the fun part, getting into the custom icons, making your own vector sets, importing them um, from you know Illustrator or from Figma or just an SVG or uh, a vector file that you have. 
Um, I have the four here, so let's get started by taking the two icons that I've already made and exported from Figma. And I'm just going to paste it in here, Command-V, and I'm just going to name this icons. You'll see it automatically makes a set. It takes the file name and creates a, um, I don't even know what this is technically called. I'm going to call it a vector board. I don't know. It's definitely not that, but uh, it's isolated to this vector. So it doesn't duplicate across the, the different vectors. This is just for this one icon, um, which is awesome. And you'll see here when I paste this in, I have the actual vector. I can tweak this. I can have full control over this. I get the um, the kind of pathfinder here with those uh, those controls for join, exclude, intersect, subtract, and uh, unite. So that's those are the main things you need for making icons. Um, that and the pen tool, which you get full access to now. So if you hit P, um, you'll see I'm actually getting these uh, suggestions on this grid as well to kind of snap to these markers, which is which is awesome. Um, but you can take this and you can start drawing as you please. Uh, and click on each of these anchor points and do it, uh, adjust these just like you would inside of Illustrator Figma, which is awesome. Obviously, this is not very beautiful. I'm just showing you, you get what you need inside of this tool, which is awesome. Um, we have our two. So I'm going to just continue from here. I'm going to set these colors to uh, plum. I can set a variable here. So this is going to be, uh, we'll just call it felt, that's fine. And we'll default it to plum. And we'll set the same one here. And now let's put it into uh, this component here. I've already set this up, so it's kind of uh, the same component used for all these um, features here. So I'm going to go to the Assets panel. And you'll see uh, right away I get this um, icons from the actual uh, project. And I can center it. I can increase the size here and you'll see I have the two variables for tag and a uh, tree. I can select it from here and the fill as well. Um, I can change the color at this point. I'm going to create the icon as a variable and then that way on the home page, I can choose here um, the icon. And as we add more, these will show up. So let's go back and into icon set. And let's, if we need to tweak these, we can, but let's make our own for those last two points. So the first thing I'm going to do getting into making these icons, I told you we have this grid here. Um, so you can kind of snap to these points. Um, and I'm working on a 24 by 24 canvas, which is the ideal size for designing icons. I'm going to take this um, ruler feature. So hit uh, control R on a Mac. Um, or you can go to the, the preferences settings to turn it on. And I'm going to basically create these guides here for four pixels on each side. On the top and bottom. Okay, so do this for the center as well. And it's going to help visually balance out these logos and give us a guiding, uh, guiding lines. So I have to do this each time for the horizontal ones, unfortunately, but it is worth it. Oh, not the vertical. Okay. Okay, so I can clean this up once I'm in here as well. I can snap these to these lines here. Good. So we have a nice round number here of 12 and 14. Everything's centered. Everything's aligned to these grid points. That looks good. It's visually balanced. Um, so now let's make a new one. So based off of these kind of patterns that we've set up here, so we have just like hard edges, um, and some kind of subtract negative space in this one. Let's see for the other two, we have a rainy day and a, 
uh, check-in. So this could just be simply a raindrop. And this one could be a like a hotel or lodging situation, just like a home vibe. Um, so let's go into this vector set and we'll hit add. So we'll have two and I'll just quickly uh, add these lines again. Okay, so we have our grid set up here and now we can make some icons. So for the raindrop, so I'll call this rain and I'll call this uh, lodging. For the raindrop, I'm going to take the pen tool, so hit P. And I'm going to start at this top point here. And I'm actually going to create a triangle hitting every corner of this area. And I'm going to remove the stroke, change it to a fill here. And we'll change the fill here to the variable. Okay. And then now let's take this path here. We'll double click into it. And we'll just take these two bottom points and we'll increase the radius. And now we have a raindrop shape. Um, if I turn off the rulers here and I zoom out, you see that's a bit bigger than the others because uh, it's actually like touching the tops and bottoms. So we can just take this and just drag it down. Um, we can do it proportionally. We could actually play with the width here. So for the lodging icon, I'm going to make a simple like hotel icon here. So I'm going to start with uh, the pen tool and maybe uh, kind of two grid spaces in here. And let's just create this shape, just a square. And then as you hover over each of these sides, you'll see that it actually suggests in the very middle another uh, anchor point that you can add. So let's do that in the middle here. And we can take these other two on the sides and just bring them down. So it's really easy, this classic house shape. Um, so this is a good start here. And let's remove the stroke, add that fill variable, and just center it, move it up pixel here. And I'm going to take a uh, shape here and do a rectangle. And let's just create this shape. Maybe we'll do, just trying to use even numbers here, so maybe six by eight. Let's try this. And Let's just take the radius on the top left and top right, and we'll just do a, a large number here so it makes a pill shape. Make sure it's centered. And I want to take this uh, fill here and actually remove it from this uh, shape. So I'm going to select both of them, and I'm going to click on Exclude here. And now it is a single shape. And it doesn't matter what this background is, that's just removed from the icon. So I think that maybe this doorway is a bit too wide. I'm just gonna bring that into four. I think that feels better. I'm gonna turn off the grid here. I think these feel good. So let's go to the home screen now and apply these. Okay, and I'm just gonna make these a bit smaller actually. Let's just drop them to 48. Center it. Yeah, I think these feel good. So I'm going to now take it a step further, as we do, and let's animate them. So these are solid icons here, uh, like they're all using fill. So what I'm going to do is actually create another version of these. So I'm going to select them all and hit Command D or, or right click and duplicate. And I'm going to rename them and just add stroke at the end. And now I'm going to take all of these icons, select them all, and I'm going to remove the fill. And I'm going to, oh, well, one, I'll make sure that all these are opacity one. That's weird. Um, but two, I'm going to set the stroke here to, I guess, that same variable. And the width one, a line is center. This is totally cool. Um, I think this works. Now, so this is just obviously like you could use these as a, another icon set to have them as a stroke. But what I'm going to do is actually take the um, these icons and make sure I just have the, uh, maybe just do the first one here with the, just that main, with just this top level vector selected. 
And I'm going to go to effects and hit stroke and actually animate this. So, and I'm going to go to transition and this is a custom ease uh, setup I have. So the time is a bit longer. It's like two seconds just to make it nice and long and some custom numbers to make it feel smooth. Okay. So back at the homepage, I'm going to select the, uh, the second one with the tag and I'm going to change this just to the, uh, stroke and let's see what happens. So it's a fun little animation that just happens on load. Love that. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to copy this effect and paste it on all of them. But instead of just changing it to stroke, I'm actually going to combine these and I'm going to duplicate this. So in this component here, I have a fill one and I'm going to add a stroke one. So this is going to be fill. This is going to be stroke. And let's make a new uh, variable for this. So this will be icon stroke. The first one we'll name it icon fill. And they're both absolute. They're both visible. We're good. And we're, we're just going to map these. So tree and then tree stroke, tag, tag stroke. Uh, these are flipped actually. Okay. And then rain and rain stroke. Okay. So we have them stacked on top of each other. So if I preview this, nothing is going to happen. You'll see maybe the outline of it, but we don't want that. What we want to do is actually have this stroke animation come in and then all of them fill at the end. So for the fill icon here, I'm going to take this and add an effect. We'll do a peer. So on a peer fade in, um, going from zero opacity to one or, or going from zero opacity that works, uh, transition here. I'm going to set the timing to, uh, maybe 0.6 seconds, but I'm going to make the delay say like three seconds, just to give it enough time for the stroke animation to happen. And it could even be uh, shortly after that too. Um, but let's see what happens now. All right. That's kind of cool. Okay. So that's pretty cool. But one thing I noticed is actually in the icon set, all of these icons are set to align center. So you'll notice here, this is like a hard edge, but in here, I don't know if I can actually zoom in. Um, it adds that stroke to the outside of it. So it's actually changing the aesthetic. So I'm going to take the strokes here and assign them to the inside instead of the center. And you'll see on this one, um, this kind of looks broken, but we're at 24 pixels here and it's basically twice the size. Um, so really, if you wanted to preview this at 18 by 8, or sorry, 28 by 28, because it was 14 by 14, you'll see that we actually have enough space there to not break. But let's see now. So now there's no overlap, it looks good. All right, that's it. Framer's vector workflow just got huge level up. Uh, it's obviously still not Figma Draw or Adobe Illustrator as far as all the advanced stuff goes. Like there's no shape builder, there's no texture, stuff like that. Uh, but for most designers, you know, 80%, 90% of the time, it's going to give you what you need. For that more advanced stuff, you can still do it outside. And as you saw, you can just import it directly into Framer. But yeah, it is more than enough to do what you need to do inside of Framer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.